So, now we're going on to a few excerpts from The Lost Childhood. This is a work based on the memoir of that title, written by the late Park Avenue psychiatrist Yehuda Neer, a native of Lvov who barely survived ordeals in Warsaw and German labor camps, often disguised as a Gentile, and who engaged in dialogue with Gottfried Wagner, the great-grandson of Richard Wagner, who grew up after World War II, was born after World War II, and uh, was trying to come to, is trying to come to terms with the anti-Semitism of his forebears. These are the two books, The Lost Childhood, and this is Gottfried Wagner's The Twi Twilight of the Wagners. Uh, in 1996, Helene and I met Gottfried's father, Wolfgang, in Bayreuth, who was also trying to come to terms with his family's past anti-Semitism. He invited us to give the first Yiddish concert there during the festival, which we did in 1998, but that's another story. In the opera, the two main characters, Yehuda and Gottfried, are called Judah, or Ulek, in flashback to the Polish scenes, and Manfred. In the first scene, they are arguing. Judah says, what? Why go into it now? I thought it was important, just after the war. I imagined myself a hero, telling the relatives in Palestine. But no! Oh, 
sugar. The, uh, the scene ends with uh, klezmer music, or the you know, scene ends with the following stage direction. Ulick purposefully, purposely knocks the lamp off the table. It breaks and the flame goes out. With a shattering of glass, the stage goes almost dark. Just enough light to show the others whirling around to see what happened and Ulick pulling off his pants and jumping into the tub. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. And, and, and the scene ends with... Um, Klezmer melody, Freit Eich Jiddelach, composed by Natalie Brandwein. Jan Hamer is a scholar, she footnotes her scores. Um, composed by Natalie Brandwein, the great clarinetist among pre war Klezmer players in the USA. Born near Lvov! Exclamation point. <laughs> Doctors takes pride in finding hidden Jews. undress, leave their clothes in boxes. Towels are handed to them. Prisoners shove each other, flick their towels, engage in horseplay. Ulick drapes his towel over his arms, folds his arms in front of himself to hide his circumcised penis. While other prisoners take showers, Ulick seeks a way out. German female Nazi guards enter in rigid military formation. They are buxom young women in military uniforms and boots. Riotous explosion of catcalls, whistles, taunts with their erections, shouted obscenities in three languages. Oversized shadow figures behind a scrim enact a comic, horrific orgy. The female guards try unsuccessfully to establish order so they can inspect the prisoners for lice. They attempt to examine the prisoners' privates. The men respond with lewd gestures and words. Ulick keeps his arms folded with the towel hiding his circumcision. He darts and dodges among the prisoners and guards looking for a way out. E, e, uh, uh, simulated intercourse between prisoner pair and pairs. Hmm. Uh, now, here's what I wrote to Jan, having watched the video of this, and what she wrote back. The climactic orgy in the final scene 
could be as cathartic as the one in Moses and Aaron, though with more limited impact, of course, in a mostly concert staging as this one was last year in Washington, in um, uh, Philadelphia. Which is not to disparage concert staging, the most moving Moses and Aaron I ever saw was largely in concert at the University of Cincinnati with George London and Rich Lewis, Richard Lewis. I wondered a little bit, though, what the point was that was being made here. Then I reread the passage in Yehuda Nier's book it's based on, and saw one crucial summary sentence that made sense of it all, which I found missing from the opera, or at least its presentation here. Quote, I thanked God for having created the sexually perverted German mind, unquote. <laughs> I wondered whether you'd in, uh, thought of including that in the libretto and then rejected it as perhaps too ironic and even possibly provocative of unwanted humor here. And Jan wrote back, what a great line. <laughs> Unfortunately, there wasn't time or lighting to stage that scene properly. Half got cut. For what it's worth, the Polish prisoners and German female guards are supposed to be having a taunting and sexual orgy in the shower while Ulick desperately scurries around the perimeter looking for an exit to escape through, his towel casually draped across his arm to hide you know what. Judah wanders through as if in a trance. Wild lights in dark environment, water from showers, phallic puppet shadows, etc. Finally, Ulick escapes, at which point the yells and the music of Les Préludes, an important Nazi propaganda theme tune, according to Gottfried, suddenly become soft as Ulick comes out of the shower room. None of this was doable stage-wise, so nothing is clear. <laughs> you try it, obviously. Okay. Um, here's how the, uh, the opera ends with fragments of a chant of one of the 13 principles of faith of Maimonides pertaining to the coming of the Messiah in a melody heard by Elie Wiesel as a boy in Hungary mentioned in his autobiography. The prayer brought comfort to many during the Holocaust. Uh, it, it's sung first by the, the chorus and then uh, by Ulick, who, who in, early in the opera um, uh, mentions that his father was taken away and he refused to believe that he would never come back and he's still, he's still looking for him.